Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and phase three of the ultimate Pelican dropship mock roof and tail section overview. As you can see, I've managed to get the Pelican onto the spinny table for you so you can have a good look around it whilst I discuss a few things with you. First and foremost, I just want to thank everybody for the overwhelmingly positive support I've had for this build. The speed build time lapse videos that I've been doing for you seem to have been going down really well. I'm getting great view accounts on those. And the channel as a whole, I've had so many new subscribers off of the back of this build. So I really appreciate the support that all you guys are giving me on this build. It just encourages me to keep at it, keep building and keep releasing videos for you. As long as I know you're enjoying them and watching them, I'll keep doing them. In regards to this video, I wanted to show you phase three. I want to show you the roof section, the interior and so on. Basically what I've done for this phase I'm also going to let you know what the next phase is as well and I wanted to address a few questions that have been asked. Now if you read any of the comment sections of any of these videos the most common comment I get over and over and over again is the scale. So many people are either not happy with the scale or unsure of the scale and so on. Now that question can be answered but for me to answer it properly I need to show you how I came up with the scale, put some tape measure against it, show you some references and so on. So that's going to be a pretty long winded answer. So rather than drag this video out, which I just wanted to be an overview video of phase three, after I've released this video, I'm going to do a video purely consisting of the scale and answering that question for all you guys. So hopefully once I've released that video, going forwards, if anybody's got a question on the scale, I'll be able to refer them to that video where they can go and watch it. And it will basically just discuss and take care of the question of is the scale right, is it too big, is it too small and so on. So you'll just have to bear with me if you want the answer to that question. Some of the other questions that have been asked through the videos I'm happy to answer now because they're much easier to answer. The question a number of people have asked is will the Pelican be able to carry a scorpion underneath the tail section? Absolutely. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to incorporate that feature yet, but it will 100% be incorporated into this mock. It has to be. It's one of my must have features on this mock. So all I can say at this point is the underside of that tail section is currently left open for me to easily be able to incorporate whatever system I come up with to be able to carry the scorpion or the warthog and hopefully even a mantis. Next question is on the landing gear, on the rear landing gear. The front landing gear hasn't been created yet, but as you can see, the rear landing gear is there. Now it's fully functional, goes up and down. It doesn't lock into place. Now the question was, is it bulky enough in terms of the size of the Pelican? I'm not sure to be honest with you. The landing gear isn't finished. I just made what I needed to make to be able to create the tail section. I always intended to put some more time into it and, and improve it, but at this point, it's not really high up on my priority list. If I run out of parts to do one of the other phases, then I may go back onto the landing gear. But I would say at this moment in time, just view that as unfinished. And speaking of unfinished, there are a number of other sections on the build that aren't finished either. For example, this section below the cockpit and the underneath of the troop bay, you can see there's, it just clearly looks unfinished. That's because it is. This section here will be brought back underneath the troop bay to just smooth off that line underneath just to make it flow a little bit nicer but again that's not really high up on my priority list at the moment I may move on to it I may not but at some point it will be improved and also underneath that cockpit area that's also hollow there and the reason for that is so I can incorporate the nose landing gear which will be a single wheel and I want that to be able to come up and down so that's going to take some thought so for now I'm just leaving that area as it is until I decide it's time to move on to it. Next question is, why is there big holes in the side of the Pelican and how am I going to attach the front wings and the engine assemblies? Well, the reason there's a big hole in the side of it is because, as I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, I want to be able to use this for stop motion and filming. So it's allowing me to gain access to interior shots if I decide to do stop motion with it. Otherwise, it's just easy access if you want to move things around in it. So that's why we've got those big holes there. So I can pull the seat assemblies out through those holes and film through either side of the Pelican. The wings and engine assemblies are going to be one unit and they're going to basically fit on to either side using the Technic blocks along the top 
of the opening you can see there, they will be used to take the bulk of the weight of the engine and wing assembly and then the studs left exposed on the side. That's what will clip it in tight. So you'll have one huge panel with the engine assembly on it and then the wing that comes directly off of the engine assembly. That's how it's gonna work in theory. Haven't made it yet, so I don't know, but that's the plan going forward. So that's why there's holes and that's how I'm going to attach those wings and engines when I come to it. One final thing I wanna mention quickly is the, the hole left by the landing gear when it comes down at the back, it, that's not finished, that will be filled in. So you won't be able to see that awkward angle left by the landing gear when it comes down. Okay then, let's uh, take a look at the tail section. Now, this is pretty much complete. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. As you can see, I've got the, uh, the twist blocks in there at the back for taking the rear engine pods. So you will be able to remove those if you need to, and they'll be able to twist up and down. So hopefully that's going to work out all right. Somebody's mentioned that's a lot of load for that little two by four twist block, but just have to see how it works out. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to come up with something that does work. But that's the plan for the rear engine pod. So that's going to be phase four, creating those two rear engine pods with all the thrusters and everything that come along with them. In regards to the roof section, this was quite tricky because I needed to create structural integrity for the tail section, but I knew I still wanted to be able to remove the roof section and I needed it to be able to re be removed easily. But at the same time, I didn't want it to look obvious anywhere that it did remove. It had to, it had to flow. So that was quite difficult coming up with that design. But again, to be honest with you, I'm quite pleased. I'm surprised at how well it turned out. And you can take this roof section on and off really easily and it just, just drops back into place with no effort whatsoever. The only downside is when you take the roof section off, the back of the Pelican then becomes a bit heavy. So the whole Pelican wants to tip back. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate the roof section coming off but I will have to get some help to support the back of the Pelican whilst I'm doing so. Okay, so I've brought in some extra muscle to support the back of the Pelican while I show you the roof coming off. You may recognize him, he's got one of those very familiar faces. If you don't know him, let me introduce you. This is my good friend, John. So John's gonna hold the back of the Pelican for me so it doesn't tip up when I take the roof off. First thing to do when you wanna take the roof off is you need to take the cover for the cockpit off first because that kind of sits down onto the front section of the roof. So you can just pull the cockpit section forward like so. And then once that's out of the way, you can just hold on to the roof on either side and just lift it up like this. As you can see, it's quite a lump, really sturdy. So I don't think it's gonna fall apart or anything. And it goes back on nice and easily as well. Whilst the roof's off, it's a good time to show you the inside of the Pelican. Get, what, what are you shaking your head for? You, you wanna play Minecraft? Okay, yeah, you've been on that enough today. As we look at this aerial shot of the Pelican with the roof sections off, it dawned on me that I've not actually stopped to take stock of the current state of the build. I've not done this yet. It's the first time I've looked at it to film it for you guys. And I'm super pleased with it. The way it flows through from the cockpit into the armory and then into the troop bay, it just gives a real sense of scale for the for the build and possibilities of what you can do in regards to stop motion filming. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how that's turned out. And if we move around to the back of the Pelican, I really like this shot. As you look back through the rear troop bay door, you can see right through into the cockpit section. You can see the cockpit and the co-pilot in their seats looking through the front canopy of the Pelican itself. So yeah, overall, these pictures are getting me pretty excited for an end result where I can actually use this to start making some stop motion. It's going to be really fun. When it comes to putting the roof sections back on, it couldn't be easier. They literally just drop into place. There's tiles around the top of the troop base section, so it doesn't clip in anywhere. It's very heavy. It's not going to move. And it's pretty snug fit. Once it's on, it's on. It's not going anywhere. So once you've got that troop bay cover on, you can then put the cockpit canopy back on, which is just held on by a couple of hinge pieces on the very nose of the Pelican. So it just hinges back. And again, once it's on, it's on. It doesn't move. I've just actually thought of another question that people have been asking me, and it's about... Sorry, what's that, John? Yes, you can go now. Thank you. Yeah. 
It's about heart. Well, more specifically, instructions, build instructions. Will I make build instructions? Can I make build instructions? Um, at the moment, no, I probably won't make build instructions simply because you can't buy these parts. So if you can't buy the parts, you can't build it. To try and collect as many pieces and sets that I've used, I can't imagine many people are going to be able to do that. And that's if there's enough sets become available to do it. So yeah, there's no point in me taking the time. It would be a massive amount of hours and work to create instructions for this. So unless Mega start producing these pieces, retail online that you can just go on to a website and buy them then no unfortunately i won't be creating instructions another comment somebody left was would i consider installing lighting onto the pelican uh, yes absolutely the whole time i've been building this i've been visualizing where i would install lighting and I definitely want to install it through the troop bay into the ceiling and through the cockpit and on the wings and just the general exterior try and look where the lighting should be and install it i've never used brick lighting before so if anybody's got any recommendations as to which is the best company to use by all means leave those in the comments section and then i can start looking into what sort of bits and pieces i'll need to install that lighting when the time comes and that's just about it for phase three. So you'll be pleased to know I'm well into the build of phase four. Once I get enough footage on that, I will release a speed build time lapse of phase four, which is the rear engine pods. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.